Okay, today we're working on an older Bobcat 418, very mini excavator. Uh, the symptom is when you press the button to go into two-speed mode for the travel, uh, it doesn't uh, go into two-speed mode. Okay, key is turned on. This is our two-speed button right here. If it's working properly, you'll be able to tap this once, and this green light will stay on solid until you tap this again and deactivate the two-speed mode. Okay, that's how it's supposed to work. As you can see right now, this is how it was acting before. You press this button, nothing happens at all. Never turns on at all. <clears throat> okay. So, the fix in this case was the two-speed module. You find the two-speed module right here by removing this cover. Four millimeter Allen bolts, top and bottom of this panel. And then in this harness over here, you will find a five pin plug, although they're only using four pins. And then you find a relay module attached to it. This is just a regular relay I've added just for testing purposes. Okay, this is not the actual module. And this one, when it's wired up to a regular relay, when you press that yellow button, it only activates the two speed mode when you press the button. Okay, so I'll show you that now. Get the key back on. When I press this, that light will come on solid, okay? That tells me now that my old module was bad because now with the relay, the testing relay in place, the circuit works again. But what's not working is the function, the latching function, where you tap it on and then tap it off. That's the only part that's missing. But that allows me to troubleshoot it that far. So now I know that the switch is working. I know that the wiring to that relay is working. I know that this light is working. And because when I drive this now and I hold this down, I get the higher speed. I also know that the two-speed solenoid, the hydraulic solenoid, is also working. Okay, so how did I get this far? So I got a hold of the schematics for this circuit, and I'll show you that. And that's what allowed me to be able to install uh, a relay in place of the two-speed module because the schematic showed me which wire is which in that five-pin uh, that five -pin harness I showed you. Uh, so let's, let's, let's check over that wiring now. Okay. So this is the schematic of the circuit that we're looking at. This is what we're concerned with. This is the green light that's on the console. This is the yellow switch in the uh, blade control. This is the module that has failed. And then this is the hydraulic solenoid that the whole circuit activates. So. This plug right here is this plug that I've retrofit to my test relay, okay? Unfortunately, on this documentation, these pins are marked A, D, E, and B, which is good because this plug is also marked right here with letters. This is pin A, pin B, and pin C. Flip it over, we've got pins D and E, okay? So that's the good part. The bad part of this schematic is that these words next to the pins are not correct, okay? Um, instead of A being switch, A is actually power in, okay? Because here we have 12 volts coming in and a ground coming into the circuit. So the pin A should actually be labeled power, Pin D should actually be labeled switch. Pin E should not be labeled ground. Pin E should be labeled out, out to the solenoid and to the lamp. And then pin B should not be labeled out. That should actually be labeled ground. So when you see this diagram, you can disregard these words here. They are not marked correctly. So you wanna pay attention to what is actually happening in the circuit. So what I'll do is I'll give you an animation of how those pins on the diagram relate to these pins on the plug as well as the colors that are on this machine. I don't know if the colors will be different on your machine or similar machines, so you may want to double check them. But uh, this is what the module looks like now that I've torn it apart. Inside this module is a regular Bosch relay. However, uh, encased in some rubberized epoxy in the base of the module is its own little circuit board, okay? This is why you can't just replace this with a relay regular relay and expect it to work um, as Bobcat intended. 
But this circuitry is what gives us the ability to latch that on with just one uh, momentary press of that yellow switch. So this machine's going to get a new um, module now, now that we know that that's actually the problem. And we know that's the problem because when we put this relay in, the circuit works again. The only part we're missing is that latching section, um, that latching circuit board, which I can't really reproduce very easily. I'm sure there's ways to do it, but um, we're going to get the original part again because this one lasted a long time. This machine's got 758 hours on it, uh, which is pretty good, I think, for this thing to have lived that long, especially it's an outside machine and so on, so it's exposed to the elements. Um, so that's what that looks like. So now I'll give you a couple different ways to fix this if you want to fix it maybe without getting uh, w without getting a new module. So you can use the two-speed function yourself. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, but before we get into the uh, other optional solutions, I'll, I'll give you that animation showing you exactly how to hook up this, te this test relay. Because no matter what you do with a different switch on the uh, operator panel there, um, as far as a workaround to avoid this latched relay piece from Bobcat, which cost about $70, by the way. Not too expensive for this, you know. Anyway, uh, I'll show you how to wire it up, and then you could use a different switch in the dashboard if you'd like to, to operate your two-speed. Okay, so to access the wiring you need to activate that relay, which is down there like we talked about, you need to get to the wiring that feeds the switch already, okay? Wiring for the switch comes through the control arm, control two, right here. These are the two wires, okay? One of these is going to have 12 volts. One of these is going to have the feed that goes back to the relay to turn on the relay. So what you can do if you want, once you put the, the replacement relay in, you can attach these two wires to a toggle switch. You can bring them up. You know, maybe over here, All right? I mean, that would make sense. It'd be a good location right next to the light. You can just click it on to activate two-speed, click it off to deactivate two-speed. That's a good suggestion that would allow you to bypass um, that Bobcat branded latching relay. Um, another idea could be that once you have a, a replacement relay and a regular Bosch relay, and you can just tie these two together. Just tie them together. And then every time you turn the machine on, you'll always have two-speed depends on what you use it for um if you need to be able to turn the two speed on and off then you probably want to go with a toggle if you're trying to do a, a less expensive workaround or maybe you're just trying to do something quick you're on a job site or whatever um, that would be a great idea for a job site if you can uh bypass that relay manually on the job site i can show you how to do that too and you can just lock it in two speed if you know you need two speed uh to finish up the job but here will just be some suggestions for you i do recommend that the best method is to just get the replacement module the correct one but uh, I know these machines are used all around the world. I know sometimes you're on a job site, you got to be able to fix something. You got to get, get running again. Um, maybe it's not going to help you to have to wait a week or more for the correct Bobcat part. So, um, nevertheless, this is how you would access those two wires. You can connect those together with a switch, have your replacement relay down there, and you will have your two speed again.